Mm. Hello and welcome to Creativity Conversations. I think that we are at episode 14 or 15, but it doesn't really matter. I am delighted to have my guest today, Andrea Morrison. Welcome, Andrea. Hello, thank you. Lovely to have you here. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't been on this call before, I get to have the pleasure of talking with people who live creative lives because they understand the nature of creativity, they embody it, and they share it with other people. So even though my guest last week, Lorna Davis, clearly told us that the bio is not the person, I am going to read Andrea's bio, <laughs> and we'll go from there. Okay. If you don't know already, this is a totally unscripted conversation, but that's why creativity is so much fun. We get to see what happens. So here we go. Andrea Morrison is a transformational coach, mentor, writer, and TEDx speaker. As a former barrister based in the UK, Andrea had a busy practice specializing in employment law. She struggled to balance her career with caring for her three small children. And after 10 years, Andrea had completely burnt herself out. She was very stressed working extremely long hours and her life was completely out of balance and her confidence was at its lowest ebb. Andrea now works with professionals and entrepreneurs, enabling them to understand how they create their experience so that they can free their innate potential, let go of what's holding them back and enable them to become more courageous. We'll talk about that. She's a weekly columnist on a Thursday with the Yorkshire Post and has been featured in a number of global and national publications. Andrea is the author of an ebook, Success the Other Way, and has a TEDx talk, When I Stopped Trying to Be Confident, I Became Unstoppable. So welcome again, Andrea. Thank you, it's lovely to be here. It's, uh, it's really nice to share this journey. I, I just love having the opportunity to do that. Fabulous. So thank you. <laughs> So we can start wherever you would like to start, but what I think I'm going to throw in the ring just to see where it goes is just jumping right in and talking about how you see creativity having affected your life and what you think it is. Wow, well, I think if you'd asked me what creativity was maybe 15 years ago, I would have said, well, I wasn't really a very creative person. Um, you know, I didn't think I was very good at art. You know, I'd been told that at school. I mean, I loved, I loved art. I loved kind of the idea of being creative, uh, but the reality wasn't what was expected, if you like. And so I'd really grown up with this idea that I wasn't really a very creative person at all. And I, and I think that's really common amongst lots and lots of people that we have a very narrow definition of what creativity really is. And, and then I started this journey, which was really quite interesting because when I burnt myself out, I remember thinking I had no idea who I was because for so long I just wore two hats, which was I was either at work and I was a barrister or I was mum. And, and I'd really lost a sense of, of who I was and what I liked and what I liked doing or, or any of that. So it was really a lovely kind of opportunity, if you like, to, to get to know all the very wonderful things that are on offer for us and, and have a go and, and see. And, and yeah, coming back to your question, well, what do I feel that creativity is? Well, how I see it now is that we are all just innately creative all of the time. I mean, I look back now and I think, wow, you know, I, my career literally fell off a cliff and I was able to pick myself up, you know, over some time, but then just reinvent what I was doing and then reinvent what I was doing again and be, you know, be able to do different things at different times and, and come up with solutions and, and ideas. And, and wow, wasn't that really creative, you know, of me to be able to do that. And, and we overlook 
what it really means to be creative. You know, I, I look sometimes at some of the things that I've written over the years and, you know, stories that I've written and all kinds of things. You're like, wow, that's a beautiful creativity, you know, as well as, as problem solving and showing up and knowing what to do at a drop of a hat and just being able to pull something out of what seems to be the sky. So can I ask you a question about this? Because I, well, we're, we're on the same page about this, but for people who have told themselves that they're not creative because for them it means artistic, what other words would you use for creativity? Because I think that that's, some of us speak a certain language that is familiar to us if we've been doing, if we've been willing to push boundaries, you know, and try different things. But for someone who isn't artistic and is still learning to try on that hat of, oh, I'm creative too, how would you suggest that they even begin to look at that in themselves? Well, I suppose some other words that we could use would be resourceful or innovative or problem solver. Um, you know, that we can come up with fresh ideas, new ideas, something might pop into your head, you know, and you might think, oh, I worked that out. You know, if you're a, a worker outer, I think that that's creative. You know, when I was just in a few minutes before I came on this call, um, I was kind of, you know, exploring in my mind, you know, creativity and, and what popped in there was, do you remember Tinkerbell? You know, the, the film Tinkerbell, you know, and I remember, you know, someone saying to me, oh, you're like Tinkerbell, you know, you just tinker with everything because I do, you know, if something doesn't work, I tinker with it until it works, you know, I, I try and keep, keep on, you know, there's a, a tenacity there to, to find a solution, you know, and it's, that's what I see is, is, is in every human being, that potential of coming up with those solutions and those ideas. And that's in all of us. How, here's a question for you. If someone is trying on this notion of, oh, maybe I could be creative too, where, or what do you think the role is for trust? Because what I've noticed is that it can sometimes be um, a little difficult for people to try new things because they're not sure how it's going to come out. And, you know, if you're anything like me as a recovering perfectionist, I wanted it to be right the first time around. Doesn't happen very often, but that willingness to be open to whatever idea is going to be in my mind. Can you speak to that? Yeah. And I think there are a few things there, aren't there? I think um, also as a recovering perfectionist, I think what I noticed first of all is that I, I created an idea in my head of what something was going to look like. You know, that in itself is creative. <laughs> I could be enormously creative as to what I think something should look like and how it should turn out. And, and noticing that I was using my imagination to do that. But that because I did that didn't mean that that was how it was going to turn out or how it should turn out. It was just an idea that I had yeah. that it could turn out like that way. But equally, it was okay if it didn't. And that I was going to be okay if it didn't. You know, so it was like I put my, all my security in, in the idea, in that imagined idea of how something should be. And I would only be okay if that happened. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when I began to see, oh, I'm actually okay if anything happens, I'm okay. Like, like this resourcefulness comes, comes to the fore. It, it bubbles up no matter what happens, no matter what situation I'm in, I figure it out. And so everybody has that capacity. Absolutely. Absolutely. So no matter what we're faced with, and I mean, goodness me, I think this past few months has been a really, you know, good, um, good example of that, is that no matter what we're faced with as human beings, we figure it out. 
And that's that creativity, if you like, at that, that really practical level. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I've noticed is that when I'm trying my hand at something new, there's a part of me that's that for a time before it happens, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, is this going to work? Is it going to work? And then it works and I'm shocked. But yet this happens so many times that you know, it's like being surprised all over again. Yeah, I, I think that's just the nature of who we are, isn't it? You know, I think that the, the whole battle between like what we know in our heart and like what our head does, you know, and we have that kind of habit of like going, oh, before we actually look. Yeah. We're just going to be okay. But yeah. it's, it's just, oh, sorry, but it's, it's, it's like that just happens, you know, and I think the less, um, the less meaning we put on that, yeah. the, you know, we just notice it that, oh yeah, that's what we do. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that, you know, my intellect is just having a bit of a wobble because it doesn't know what's going to happen because it never does. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm good. It will be okay. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how we, we as odd human beings often pay more attention to our so-called failures than we do our, our successes, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, so you know what I'm, I, I'd love you to talk about is that point at which you we're done with being a barrister or an attorney if you're in the US. Mm -hmm. And what it was that made you start looking for something else that, that was more who you are, more in line with what you could be. Yeah, well, it, for me, it wasn't like an overnight thing at all. <laughs> it really wasn't. So for about a year before I gave up, maybe even longer than that, I. I was really deeply unhappy, I mean, and really stressed, and I really wanted to start. And um, it was that real kind of gut feeling, if you like, that I had to start. And physically, I mean, I'd had pneumonia, and um, I was really quite unwell. Uh, I was getting panic attacks and all sorts of things. So I, I kind of knew my time was up, I had, I had to start. And that, that's what I did. And thinking naively, oh, if I stop, then I'll be fine. You know, because all my, at this time, I mean, I had no understanding at all about how I worked. So in my kind of naivety, I thought that everything came from my outside. How I was feeling came from my outside circumstances. So if I changed my outside, I would then overnight feel completely different. And of course I didn't at all. <laughs> And for a long time, I was, I was quite poorly for a long time after that. And it was, it was really lovely how things unfolded. So almost immediately after I'd, I'd finished, I had the opportunity of doing some tutoring at our local university. That was a completely new experience for me. And it was, um, it was a new course in, in law. And and that introduced me to the idea of personal development. I had no clue before that. I thought we were just fixed the way we were. I, I had no idea that you could understand more about how you were. And, and I'll always be grateful for that. And it was interesting how that just kind of came across my path, you know? Um, and then after about a year or so, I then got another fresh thought. I didn't know what these were, by the way. I, it, it just occurred to me that I might try my hand at reflexology, which was completely the other end of the spectrum when you talk about careers from being a barrister to, you know, working with people's feet. I mean, it's like you, you can get any different to that. But it felt so right for me to do that. You know, now... In my mind, I thought, yeah, this would be perfect because I'll, I'll be in a, a room on my own with a client who's asleep. It's just not going to be stressful at all. I thought this was ideal, right? But I still managed to kind of get quite stressed about it, but I was a lot better. So I'd been kind of on a bit of a journey. 
on there and and I started sharing with my clients about the journey that I'd been on and, and what I'd learned and what I thought had helped and they said Andrea this is really this is really interesting you know you should write a blog so I wrote a blog and and then somebody suggested I put it in a book and I thought oh that sounds a good idea I, I, I might put a book together you know and and we went on holiday and and I can still remember it really clearly all the ideas just came flooding for this book you know and I just and it just all came to me. So I just put them all together and, and did that. You know, I, I didn't overthink any of this stuff. I was at the time overthinking my business and how busy I was and getting stressed about that. But there was this whole other part of my journey that I was just kind of following, which was, which was lovely. And as a result of that, I ended up on a course actually doing NLP uh, with a guy who just recently worked with Michael Neal. And then I was in, introduced to this amazing understanding. And when I look back now, it was just so wonderful how it all unfolded, you know, and how I, I didn't have to actually consciously kind of uncover who I was. It just, I just followed the next step and the next step and the next step. Though it didn't feel like that at the time, I can see now how I was just following that journey. Can you say a little bit about the understanding that you have come to embody, shall I say? <laughs> um, in what way? Which way would you like me to start? Oh, I know. It's a, could, we could be here all <laughs> afternoon, but yeah. for our purposes now, <laughs> can you just talk about how you see yourself now and, your, and who you are and your possibilities? as opposed to maybe talking a little bit more about how you saw yourself. I know you said that you felt like you were fixed in your personality. Mm -hmm. um, so if you could share something about how that has changed for you and what you notice that works better for you and that you see your life has changed for the better. Yeah, well, I think, Maybe if I share with you the first insight that I had all those years ago, we were talking about six years ago, was that just because I thought something, it didn't mean it was true. And, and that hit me like a, like a burst because like, I could spot the obvious stuff. Like, you know, I, if I thought, oh, wouldn't it be lovely if, you know, George Clooney came and whisked me off for dinner. Like, I knew that wasn't going to happen. Like, I didn't go and act on that. But... Like everything else, especially what I thought about myself, I thought was true. Like, I didn't even question it. I just thought it was true. Like what? Like, like I wasn't good enough. Like I shouldn't have been doing the job that I was doing. I wasn't a good enough mom. Um, you know, people didn't really like me. I wasn't a people person. You know, I wasn't good in, in groups. So, oh, lots of things. I mean, honestly, I had like an encyclopedia amount of, stuff in my head that was all negative you know how you know life was hard it was really stressful and I couldn't manage it and I was so stressed and I was so overwhelmed and you know this was impossible and, and it was like a constant narration in my head you know that I would then engage in so then I would create even more thought and even more thought and even more thought and then I try to fix the thought by creating even more thought about it you know so I ended up with arguments in my head. It, it was just crazy. And so that first insight was that I didn't have to believe that everything was true. That was, that was a real eye-opener. And then to really see that my thoughts created my experience. And I had a, a really good deal of control over that. You know, I mean, okay, you know, there were times when yeah, we, we're not aware that we're doing thought at all. It all seems really real. Yeah. But that so often I would notice the thinking that I was doing and how that was creating the experience I was in. And that simply by noticing it, it like lost its grip. And I'd have a fresh thought and everything would change. And that blew my mind. Can you, can you share an example? Because I think that's what you're saying is, is really important because 
you know, most people, if they think it, they believe it's true. Oh, absolutely. Goodness me, look at an example. Um, oh, goodness. Well, say, for example, you know, I was like arguing with a member of my family. You know, I have three grown up kids, uh, three teenage kids, you know, and, and I could get really wrapped up in that. You know, and I could be thinking, oh, my goodness, they're going to be like this forever. And I'm going to have to sort this out. And, uh, and uh, you know, and then I just kind of notice, oh, hold on a minute here, you know. And I, 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 there'd be no dialogue. I'll just know, be aware of, of what's going on. And in that moment, so often a little fresh thought will pop into my head, either like, you know, it could be anything from my well, let's just walk away or, you know, they don't really mean it or you know that they're not going to be like this forever or, you know, they're just having a tough time or that'd be something. And it will be like somebody's deflated the balloon, you know, like, like the balloon's full and full and full and full and full and, full and then all of a sudden somebody just let out some air and it would just kind of start shrinking and I'll come down from off the ceiling, you know, I, I, before I had this understanding, I can see that that was happening. So I was noticing, but I wasn't noticing. So I go just dive back into the old thing. I blow the balloon back up again. Yeah. You know, and, and completely innocently, because I, I knew no different. I, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know what to look out for. I didn't, I wasn't aware. Yeah. You know. And, and although that's like a really kind of simple example, I see it all over, you know, like we get wrapped up in stuff about our businesses, our work, or with people that we know, and, and it's okay, you know, that, that's, that's how we are as human beings, you know, it's uh, the kind of randomness of what we get caught up in and what we do. You know? That's really, really helpful to that you share that so thank you so my next question is <laughs> where isn't it interesting that the way we're conditioned is to focus on and wrestle with and obsess with, assess over the negative thinking mm. that we have rather than realizing oh i'm just going to change the channel yeah. i'm just going to think something else yeah. There is something about humans, they're like dogs with bones, you know, if we get some cranky thought in there, we have to work it out and we have to figure it out, at least we think we do, rather than just saying, ick. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. yeah, move on. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> because something else, as you say, something else will come up. Some other thinking will come up. It's like yeah. being in the middle of a, you know, if I'm in the middle of a, a angry something or other and then suddenly I'm looking out the window and I'm still mad at this person but I'm looking out the window and saying oh my gosh what a beautiful day it is to be yeah. able to say oh I don't have to hold on to that I can pay attention to this I think yeah. that kind of flexibility is something a we could all use more of and b that's part of the nature of creativity what would happen if what else is possible yeah. what can we do with this instead of being stuck with whatever it, thoughts are continually running through our brains. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I so agree with that. And I think it's one of the things I have most conversations with about is like, I've been having this really negative thinking, and, but why am I having it? Why am I still having it? You know, how can I stop that? Yeah. I don't want that. How can I change that? Yeah. You know, and, and it's like we demonize. It's like if you put every single thought we ever had, like on a spectrum, yeah, <laughs> it's like we're demonizing like a, a good proportion of them. And like we just don't want to have them anymore. And we, have, we attach so much meaning to them, you know, that they're bad and they're unproductive or they're. And I don't know, the more I see it, the more I. They're, they're, what, they're just a different experience. You know, so we get wrapped around that for a little bit. But, but how often when we fall out of it, we then are super creative. 
or we're really efficient, or our minds are more focused, or we have a great conversation, or we've seen something new. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like, well, yeah, those, those periods of time, you know, whether we're, our brains are temporarily on screensaver while we go off in a little wander into the negative unknown, <laughs> You know, or whether we demonize a person in our head or, or whatever it is, you know, it's, it's like, well, that's, it's all okay. It's, it's all good. In my, in my mind, I, I feel well, it's, it's all good. It doesn't need to be fixed yeah. and we can just move on. You know, it's like, oh yeah, okay. I was up in my head about that for a few days. Well, I'm not now. Oh, well. Oh, well, you know. I would love to ask you about how it came about that you did your TEDx talks or talk. I'm sure for a number of people, they would think, oh my gosh, I could never do that. How did that come about? How did that come into your head? How did you entertain that thought? How did you dance with it? And how it showed up when you did it? Yeah, it, it was actually a really, a really lovely experience, which again was is something I didn't think I'd, I'd ever really say, but it was a really lovely experience. So I'd wanted to, I'd wanted to do a TEDx for like a while, but like a long time ago, because I'd seen it and I thought that would be really, really, you know, that would be good to do. You know, I was in that kind of camp, that would be good to do. And I'd kind of got over myself, if you like, and I just, just wasn't I, I wasn't really attached whether I did one or not that's the kind of space I was in and over the summer I became aware of a, a TEDx event locally and the way that the organizer was talking I thought that she'd already got speakers and I thought oh okay oh wow and and I was a little disappointed if I'm honest that I you know wasn't able to be part of it but I just thought well you know it, it's not not my time and you know the timing's not right but that's fine we go along and support it and if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't you know it's no biggie you know and it got to about the middle of October and we're, we have like a local networking group and there were quite a, a few kind of hundred people it might have been a couple of thousand people on it and she posted on it and said if you haven't received your speaker brief then do get in contact with me and I and I just happened to see it and I thought oh so she hasn't got her speakers and and I had this really cheeky thought and I just thought well I'll just email her and say I know I'm being cheeky and I don't have one and I don't even know what to talk about but can I have a look at a brief yeah I had no clue what I was going to talk about no clue at all and she emailed straight back and she was like, yeah, it will be great. I've seen you speak before. I'd love for you to be involved. Um, these, are, these are the subjects we already have. Can you give me an idea of what you talk about? And I was literally just stood in my kitchen thinking, well, I really don't know. And, and I, it was as though my, 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 my conscious brain was like 10 minutes behind what my intelligence was it because I found myself just typing an email back going, oh yeah, yeah, we can talk about confidence. That's fine. That'll do. And she came back and she said, oh yeah, that's great. That'll be a really good fit. Meanwhile, my, my intellect's going, what? Like, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> so in her email, she said, oh, I need a video by Friday, you know, to, to, to like assess it. That's when the application date closes. And, and I just thought, well, you know, if this is kind of meant to be, right, if this is supposed to, I'll just follow the next step and the next step will be an idea will pop in my head. And if an idea doesn't pop in my head, then I'll just say, I, 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 can't, I can't do it. You know, I've not done a video. You know, it's, it's no big deal. You know, we'll just see. And I'd kind of forgotten all about it as much as you can do. You know, I just thought, I'm not going to manufacture this. I'm just going to see what comes up. And I was doing the washing up in my kitchen a couple of evenings later. And, and what popped in my head was a phrase that my husband used to say to me all the time, which was, Andrew, if you just had more confidence, you'd be unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And he used to say that to me all the time I was at the bar, like all the time. And I just thought, oh, wow, wouldn't that be a beautiful place to start? 
And I stopped what I was doing and I grabbed a piece of paper and the ideas just came like, oh yeah, this is where you start. This is what you need to say, you know. And, and it, was just, it was just really lovely. I just felt that I wasn't really part of, of the story, if you like, you know, of, uh, like I wasn't manufacturing this. It was just kind of coming to me. And, um, and I looked at, at, the, at the title of the TEDx, which was um, Incremental Steps to Change. And, and I, just, I just thought, yeah, I tried everything, every single incremental step you could think of. I mean, in fact, I tried everything. I was trying too hard, you know? And then, that, then, the, then the title came, you know? When I stopped trying to be confident, I became unstoppable. And it, and it, was, just, it was just lovely. So, so I just did the video. I didn't really plan what I was going to say. I just spoke to the camera. And, and then, you know, she said, right, no, that's great. You're in, we need to do this training. And I just kind of showed up and, and took on board what they said and, and just, just kind of went with it. And I, I never really thought further than the next step, you know? So it's like, oh, we've got this rehearsal. We've got this, we need this from you. And I just showed up and I did that and I did that. And I never really thought, what would happen when I got on the TEDx stage or, or whether it would be uploaded to the YouTube channel or anything like that, because I was just literally just kind of like, oh, I'll just see what happens. You know, if I trip up on the stage, then that, so be it. That, that's what's meant to happen. I've had a really, I've had a really good journey. It's been fun. <laughs> so, yeah, so it was really, it was really interesting and it certainly wasn't, how I had imagined a TEDx journey to have been when I thought about doing it maybe four or five years ago, you know, when it was kind of on my to-do list, which I'd kind of been, you know, it was, yeah, it, it was just, I would, I, and I just felt like this for the last few years, well, I'm just showing up to the next step, just showing up to the next step and allowing the outcome to just sort itself out. What I want to know is how long, this is probably not a fair question, but how long did it take you to be willing to wash the dishes instead of work on the TED Talk? You know what I mean? Because when we have, so often when we have a project in mind, we think, okay, I'm going to sit down tonight and I'm going to plan it out. Here's my outline. This is what I'm going to fill in. And then we sit down and nothing is coming. So to be willing to stop, instead of trying to force something to happen, just to stop and say, okay, I guess I'll wash the dishes or maybe I'll watch a movie. Mm -hmm. But it's in that stopping of trying to make something happen that something else emerges yeah. and that's what i hear in what you you say yeah totally um oh it took me a long time it took me a long time i mean you know as well as being a, a recovering perfectionist i was also a recovering control freak you know <laughs> i think it comes hand in hand with yeah. being a lawyer for such a long time you know um and, and I think it was a, a gradual kind of process of, of being able to really rely on that, that deeper feeling, that, that deeper nature of us. And, and the more I saw that it was just a better way of working, the easier it was for me to look in that direction, you know? And, you know, I'll be honest, like all of us, sometimes I get wrapped up and I think, oh my goodness, no, I've got to prepare this. I've got to prepare this. And then, you know, when I show up with my prepared notes, I look at them and think, what on earth was I thinking? Why on earth did I waste so much time on this? You know, and, and I, I ignore them or, you know, it might be half, halfway through, I might think, no, we don't need this. And, you know, I check it away. I think that's, that's part of the deal. Yeah. You know, it's part of the deal. Excuse me. It seems to me that the more we 
realize that this aliveness in us, this thing that is animating us is intelligent. And it's like our inner GPS system that is meant to work perfectly in situations we've never been in before. Mm -hmm. But the more we can rely on that and we, the more we see it in action, the easier it is to get out of the, oh, I have to sit down now and prepare for this. Yeah, absolutely. Because it just doesn't make any sense. Because I feel like, you know, where it's a shortcut, you know, to use that deeper intelligence is, is a shortcut to creativity, you know, to creating something. You know, it's like I can, I can sit at my desk and I can go through everything that's in my head and I can create from here with all the old stuff that I've got, you know? Or, or I can go for a walk and see what bubbles up. Now, that might be something that's been stored in there for a long time or it might be something fresh, but it won't feel quite as like hard work. Yeah. That's the key, I think. And I think, and that is the key. And it's knowing that whatever, wherever that intelligence is almost kind of pointing me to, if you like, you know, sometimes I might think, oh, I feel like washing the dishes or sometimes I might go for a walk or some, you know, it, it's not that, oh, I need to do this to access it. Sometimes I can just gaze out of my window and, and that will be enough. Oh. You know, it, it's, it's, it's more about just knowing that it's there. I love that. I'm going to open the call up to anyone else who is participating with us this afternoon. So anyone has a question, comment, a wondering, raise your blue, little blue digital hand and we'll get you on. But as you can tell, we have no shortage of things to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so Martin, let's go to you. Hi, Martin. Hello, how are you ladies doing today? Great. I'm good, thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm glad to hear that. Nina, what I was hearing when you asked that question about washing the dishes or like taking a break to watch a movie, kind of noticed more and more when you do that, if, if it is a movie, there's like some sort of synchronicity or kind of something that you needed to hear in that exact movie to like, to really move you forward. So that I, uh, I love that you that you shared that and asked that question, and uh, and since you brought up Tinkerbell early on in the in the call, I had a uh, a Peter Pan related question for you, <laughs> and uh, it was more about how you know he was famous for for never wanting to grow up, and that was like his like claim to fame, and uh, I feel like lately. I've been hearing more and more of that of people saying like, you know, you have to be, you have to be serious. You have to grow up. You have to do all these things. And, uh, I, I never really agreed with that. And, and the more I've been listening to Nina and these creativity calls, the less I want to believe that. And I, uh, I wanted to kind of hear so, somebody's opinion on this. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that's been directed at me quite a number of times. <laughs> you know, I, I've got to be more serious and I don't take life seriously enough and life's not like that. Um, and, uh, you know, you're getting on now and you've got to think about the future and, uh, yeah, all, all stuff like that has been, has been laid at my door. Um, and I think how, how I'm feeling now, certainly as I get, get older, I think, well, Actually, I haven't aged, like like who I am. And I remember my, I mean, my mom, bless her, she's in her mid eighties now. And I remember her saying that when she was my age, you know, she's I feel the same as I did when I was sixteen. And of course, like I was a teenager, and I just looked at her and thought she was weird. But you know, I I, I understand what she was pointing to. Like we have no age. Like our body is my age, but actually we have no age. And I think. As we get older, we collect these ideas about who we are and who we should be and how we should behave. And the more I feel that we see that that's all they are is ideas and beliefs, then they're not actually any reflection on who we are. 
you know, or not a true reflection, I think then we can let those go. And, and as we do let them go, then it's, you know, we, we can be more open to what's available to us. Does that, does that, does that answer your question? <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, it, it does. And it's, it's just been funny because, well, the reason I asked this was because honestly, because you brought up Tinkerbell, but the more I've been seeing like kids and like playing around this summer, cause it's been like kind of rare, honestly. And, and now I work at a bar and like people can't really dance or like socialize. So it's, there's been like a, a lack of, of that this summer. And so I was uh, doing a call on my front porch the other day and I saw these kids like, laughing and running and playing together and I was just like wow like I I like want to just like go join those kids like it's just like they were just having so much fun doing like nothing <laughs> yeah yeah and, and I think you know in my mind that's kind of how we're designed to be you know just like in the moment enjoying that moment for what it is and then especially as we get older and we've collected so many kind of beliefs and ideas, we spend so much time darting between the past and future and, you know, and, and in this idea of who we are, that we, we fall out of the present moment, fall out of like our true nature. And, and it's almost like we don't feel that we can enjoy it and, and we can, it's what we're here for. I suspect Martin, that you already knew the answer before you asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I, I wanted to hear, uh, hear from, from you guys. <laughs> well, isn't it interesting who the people are that say that to us? Because mm -hmm. you know, it's such an interesting, the more you start to get away from that perspective of, oh, I need to, there's all these things I need to do, like this capacity to, uh, live in the moment and, and uh, respond to the moment with intelligence and aliveness as if that wasn't there, you know, so that we have to compensate in some way. But that, that energy of aliveness that happens with when we see it in kids or people who are creating things or encouraging things or being part of a community, there's that quality of that energy that is so delicious yeah. and I was like oh I want that too and then we actually realized oh we do have it wait a minute we can live that way yeah yeah it's so true what what came to my mind as well is like you know when if you've ever worked in like a corporate environment you know and and then you all go out for lunch and everybody lets their guard down and they're just all human you know, I remember that, you know, especially at the bar and we'd, we'd go out for lunch and there'd be judges there and QCs and you know, people, you'd be like, oh, goodness. And then they were just like human beings and they, they didn't have this kind of persona that they'd adopted throughout their working day. You know, and it's like, well, why can't we just show up as we are? <laughs> like all of the time, wouldn't that be refreshing? <laughs> We could sure use that now. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Martin. Yeah, thank you, ladies. Let's go to Gary. Hello, Gary. Hello. Whoops. Oh, you're, you're muted. How did that happen? Try again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Good. Uh, the uh, something that Martin said and that Andrea uh, 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 responded to and that Nina responded to. But I had this thought as, as Martin was talking about the you, you've got to grow up uh, business, you know, come on, grow up. I think what those people are really saying is there's too much life coming out of you and it makes me uncomfortable. Deaden yourself a little bit for me, <laughs> wouldn't it? Because that feels, that feels right to me. All this exuberance and this childlike energy. No, 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 no. We can't do that. You know, what, yeah. what? What nonsense. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> it's always so refreshing to see people who are willing to say, that's interesting, and then pay no attention to whatever that so-called good advice was supposed to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. 
It yeah. just shows you how we get into a rut with our thinking and then we believe that that's the only alternative we have. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're in a rut with our seeing once we're in a rut with our thinking, you know. Yeah. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah. And what kind of human that is, you know? Mm -hmm. how, how easy it is to do and and how really it's part of our experience, you know, to to kind of fall asleep like that. You know, I think that, that so often I think we we may aim to be always awake. You know, but in many ways, it doesn't matter how awake we've been, there'll always be times when we fall asleep again, because that's the kind of nature of who we are. Yeah. It's a game of hide and seek. Yeah, it is. It is. And sometimes I love to fall asleep because so often I'll, I'll hear something fresh when I wake up again. Ah, that's so good. This conversation is reminding me of something that uh, a previous guest on the show, Davy Beeler, said. He was talking about creativity and he said, sometimes you just have to suspend your dignity. <laughs> Isn't that the case? Like dignity can be such a life killer. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes the life out of us. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, whenever we have any ideas about ourselves, it sucks the life out of us. Yeah. You know, and it's it doesn't matter what ideas that we have about ourselves. You know, we can say, oh, you know, we're really good at something or we're really good at something or we're really not good at something. Either way, it, but in my mind, it can steer us off track, yeah. you know, and take us away from that creativity because we just get so invested in the idea that we have about us. Yeah. You know, that we don't see the newness that's coming through. I think the more we are aware that we're actually made for living in the present, mm. the more creative we can be, right? Because we don't have to know what's coming ahead. And, you know, here we are in the middle of a pandemic, six, almost seven months into it. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen when flu season arrives, when the winter arrives. We have no clue. And yet, there's still a part of us that can be ready. We still have an intelligence to rely on. And the, the more we forget that, I think the harder it is for us to, to just go through a day. Yeah. Oh my God, what am I going to do? You'll know what to do yeah. in that moment. Don't you find that when we futurize, when we time travel into the future, we always leave our intelligence behind? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're never there are we in the future like oh yeah i've got my intelligence it has it's back you know no 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 that that's way back you know we've left that behind so you know our ego forgets that we have this intelligence you know and 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 it's not in my mind that oh we throw kind of plans or safeguards or anything out of the window it's like we know we know you know i i have my have an idea or that might be useful for my kids to have next week when they go back to school like like we know we get that thought to be on the lookout for something you know and and the more we realize that the more we see it I think it for me it, it was very much seeing it in action and and um I'm a I'm a lover of reflection probably a little bit too much but I love to look back and see Kind of oh yeah i can see how my, my system was working there i can see how my intelligence was working even though i wasn't aware of it and and how when i was ignoring it and um, and how it still had my back i think that's the best kind of reflection to be able to say look it showed up here i was yeah. smart here <laughs> wisdom yeah. popped in here yeah, and look how creative that was. Yeah. It really got me out of a fix. Yeah. You know, I remember one time when I was on a particular case, and I mean, I obviously didn't have any of this understanding, and we had very late pleadings come in, you know, like 
at the close of close of the day that really blew everything out of the water. And of course, I just went in at a complete head spin about it. It was quite a, a substantial case and I didn't know what I was going to do. And, ah, oh, you know, and I was pacing around the house and, you know, the air was a little bit blue and all of that. And, and then it just occurred to me to look in a certain place. It just occurred to you. It just occurred. And I can see it now because it was, I was so stressed by it. It was one of those memories that you remember. And I remember thinking, I'll just look at this. And it was like, oh, yeah, actually. And then I started on a trail. You know, that, that thought led to another thought, which led me to another place, which led me to a different case, which led me to a different line of thinking. And I just followed it. And by the end, I had an answer, right? I'd created an answer on an area of law I had no experience on. It wasn't something I'd argued before. I had an answer. And it was one that it, it, it won. And the court found in my favor. And it worked and it, it was all good, right? Now, I could look back at that and think, wow, what an incredible system. Now, I didn't know what the whole answer was. But it showed me what the first step was. And from there, it nudged me into another one and then another one and then another one. And I worked it out. I figured it out. Now, that to me is, is creativity. You know, okay, I might not be a Picasso. I might not be able to, you know, sometimes I scribble and I, I, might, I might sketch a bit. But that to me is what we've got going for us as human beings. We figure stuff out. Yeah, and, and that's just amazing. That, that blows my mind. I love what you're saying because to me, it, it uh, answers the question, who's driving the bus? <laughs> <laughs> it's not our intellect. Our yeah. intellect is in service of that intelligence that, that, hey, look at this. You know, here's a breadcrumb. Here's another breadcrumb. But we didn't put it there. No, no, it, it's just there. And, and in my mind, it, it's so important. I mean, especially in these times, because we can then see how we are built for the unknown. You know, it's like we're, we're meant for the unknown. It's how, it's what we're built for. Yeah. You know, we have a system that thrives in the unknown. It, it shows up and it works in the unknown. You know, so it, it, it's just, yeah, it's just incredible. Isn't it? I, it's so great to be reminded of that because we think in our heads that we're not built for the unknown, that we mm -hmm. need to surround ourselves with what we already know. But that's just a, a, something that's worked in the past. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in the present. Yeah. And, and we take that with us. I mean, that's the beautiful thing. You know, it's like we have this incredible system that doesn't only access everything we've ever known and ev everything we've ever experienced, but also has the capacity of coming up with something new and fresh or pointing in us into a direction or, or, you know, suggesting that we watch a film so that we hear something that triggers something else. You know, it's like, I mean, how, and, you know, that's happened to me more times than, than I can count, you know? And, and it's like, oh, this is incredible how intelligent this system is. And I think once you see it, it becomes not a question of, oh, I need to trust it more, and more of a, well, why wouldn't I use my system like that? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? You know? I often use the analogy of like learning to drive a car. And if you had been taught to drive a car, but you'd only been shown first gear, right? And it's like, you've been driving your whole life just in first gear because nobody would ever taught you. You have five other gears reversed in the steering wheel. So you have just been chugging along really slowly in a straight line. And every time you wanted to turn right, you had to lift your car up and turn it and put it back down again. And you know, and then somebody says, hey, did you not know you had all of this? Well, it wouldn't make any sense to go back to just driving in first gear with no steering wheel. It just wouldn't. 
That's such a great analogy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is my this is my creativity. I come up with some buckadoodle analogies sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's really appropriate because so often we reach for the familiar and the known rather than what is what else might be possible we keep wanting something else yeah. we keep thinking oh what it, you know this is this will work and yet it doesn't have that sense of aliveness that leads to the next step and to the next step yeah oh totally and i think i think that's um a, a really lovely thing to notice though when we are kind of more using that intelligence how alive that feels like it just has a different quality about it you know and again you know I, I don't want this to sound like a oh this is how to do like you know you have to do it like this because it's not like that because sometimes I create stuff with my head and I think oh you know and it works and it's fine you know and and sometimes it occurs to me to Like, wow this feels incredible you know both are good you know and it's it's just a different way of using the same system i recently heard michael neal talk about thoughts as play-doh that they're just neutral yeah. the the material is just neutral in and of itself we can make monsters out of it we can make gods and goddesses we can make scary things we can make beautiful things we can do whatever we want with it so we don't have to be afraid we don't have to take stuff that is on the shelf and reuse it we can create something new and fresh and see what happens because yeah. that capacity to use whatever comes into our head or discard it is our choice yeah. And that none of it needs fixing, you know, like we might get a really, you know, not a very nice thought or a stressful thought or a worry thought. And, and, you know, we might put a lot of, um, a lot of meaning on that, you know, like that's a bad thought or I shouldn't be thinking that, or I don't like this experience. So I don't want to have this experience again. And, and it's, and so what, so what it, it it literally is just the same as me having a lovely thought you know it, it when we see that you know we don't have to attach any meaning to them they're literally just tools to to create an experience by and okay so we were on a different channel for a while so what doesn't mean anything we're back now that is such a great point because we're the only ones who ascribe meaning to what we do Mm -hmm. There's no ultimate, absolute, good, bad, right, wrongness to what happens to us, but except in our own heads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which we use our creativity all the time. <laughs> I can be very creative in my own mind. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, clearly, I mean, just because of what you're saying, it goes yeah. both ways. It does. It does. It does. Absolutely. <laughs> this has been a really fun conversation. Thank you so much for joining me, Andrew. Can you tell people where they can find you and where they can find your TEDx talk? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you, my TEDx talk is on my YouTube channel, or if you search for my name on YouTube and then put TEDx at the end, it comes up. Um, you can find me on my website, which is andreamorrison.co.uk. Um, I'm on Facebook, so you, you know, feel free to connect with me on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram, and I think I'm still on Twitter. So, you know, it's I'm in all the different kind of various places. So, you know, if you if you're listening and uh, you'd like to, then feel free to connect with me. I'd like that. That'd be good. That's great. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I would love to see you next time around. And I also invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And now my um, creativity conversations are on a podcast platform. So you can find them on Spotify, Podbean. They're coming to iTunes. And wow. a station near you. Excellent. Oh, well done. <laughs>
<laughs> so thank you again, Andrea, and thank you everyone for joining us, and we will see you soon. Yeah, thank you very much, Nina. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you for joining Bye us. For now.